Warning, the following video may contain cursing and coarse adult language. This video is not meant to be viewed by individuals under 13 years old. If you are under the age of 13, please exit out of this video and stop watching the fuck now. Thank you. Welcome, welcome once again to another episode of Pokemon Shining Pearl. Last we left off, we managed to make it around back all the way to the fight area. We uh, went back up to the survival area to speak with Buck and his grandfather. We made it back all the way to Stark Mountain, and we finally caught ourselves a Heatran. There are a couple extra things that we need to fix. We need to do before we finish things up here. Let's go ahead and let's uh, take things a bit of a different direction and uh, head back to Pistoria City. Or rather, let's not head to Pistoria City. Let's head a little elsewhere. You might remember that there is an individual over here at the Valor Lakefront by the Seven Star Hotel or the Seven Star Restaurant. Congratulations on completing your Sinnoh Pokedex. Now keep on collecting even more Pokemon. Yes, I mentioned before earlier in an episode, I believe on a text exit, or not just the text edit, but uh, this man gives us the catching charm. By this, we now have the ability to get even more uh, chances at a critical capture. Kind of a shame I waited until long this time to pick it up, but anyway. Our next episode, or next episode, our next destination is here in Cantalave City. We, yeah, we can't actually go into the Harbor Inn. But we need to speak to... Yeah, go to Sailor Eldrick's house. I never thought our boy would fall into this endless nightmare. It's happened in the past in Cantalave. There are people who never woke up from their nightmares. The little boy is thrashing about in his sleep. He appears to be in torment. He's muttering something. Dark. Dark is watching me. There is a Pokemon that we can catch that will um, release him from his torment. But that Pokemon, we can't find here. I think we need to go to Celestic Town. So, it turns out, I've lost my love of sailing since my son fell into that horrid nightmare. I need the Lunar, feller, uh, lunar Feather from Full Moon Island to awaken him. Would you go to Full Moon Island for me? If not for me, then for my son? Only you can awaken my son from his awful nightmare. We're both counting on you. Please, I need the Lunar Feather from Full Moon to awaken him. So yeah, we need to speak to the boy's father. He'll sit, give us a ride to Full Moon Island. Pokemon flew off somewhere. There's something sparkling where the Pokemon once was. And we got a Lunar Feather. Now, thankfully, we don't actually need to catch Cresselia in order to get the Lunar Feather. It just leaves it behind automatically. That Pokemon you met was the Lunar Pokemon. I've heard tales of it flying from place to place throughout Senno. Oh, that sparkle! That must be the Lunar Feather! Thank you, that will wake my son from the nightmare. Also, the boat is gone for whatever reason. But it doesn't matter because we're able to sail back just as fine anyway. So we'll go ahead. We'll speak to Eldrick Jr. The Lunar Feather began to glow, and the boy's sleeping face became untroubled and serene. 
And he woke up! Huzzah! Oh my gosh, you're awake! Oh my son. I don't know what to say. Thank you. We'll never forget you. Seeing you back to normal makes me feel great! I've regained my spirit as a sailor. Sailor, Come sail with me later. I couldn't wake up. I saw it. It was a scary dream. It was a dark place. There was a dark Pokemon. But mommy, daddy, I could always hear your voices. We don't really get anything except for the, uh, the everlasting gratitude of the parents. And, uh, the fact that we can now catch, uh, both Cresselia and Miss Brit out on the overworld. There is one other Pokemon that we could potentially catch that is also related to Cresselia. And that is the Nightmare Pokemon Dark Rite. The unfortunate issue is that we can't do that right now. The reason is, as I mentioned earlier, there are two things that we need to do in with this particular update. Now, as of recording, the update has not yet been applied to uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl that will even allow us to... Um... Oh! Hey, there we are. There's Cresselia. I believe it's what, level 70? No, level 50. Um, probably ain't gonna work, but let's try it anyway. Figured. Yep, and Cresselia just gets the fuck out of Dodge. And already both it and Mesprit are halfway across the, the region. But anyway, as I mentioned before, um... The update that even allows us to even catch Dark Rye has not yet been applied as of this recording. That, that'll probably be... Uh, that's most likely going to be applied and patched in uh, by the time that this episode is edited and goes live. But even so, there is two things that we need to do um, in this particular file before we can even catch Dark Rye. One, we need to be the Pokemon champion. Now we've already taken care of that. That that issue's already done. But the second part to even be able to catch Dark Ride, and to a slightly greater extent, the other Pokemon, which happens to be Pokemon God Arceus himself, we need to play Pokemon Legends Arceus and go through every last story mission in that game. And then, with that save file, come back to this game, and then we'll be able to catch both Darkrai and Arceus. Now, I want to say that just being able to catch Darkrai just requires the save file. I don't think we need to be able to go through all the story missions just to catch Darkrai. I do know that we'll need to catch all those... Uh, we'll, we'll have to go through all the story missions in Legends of Arceus to be able to catch Arceus. But, uh, I don't think that's going to be necessary for Dark Ride. But either way, the point of the matter is, is that I have not even touched Pokemon Legends Arceus as of this time. I haven't even begun playing that game yet. So, while I do intend on showing those off to maybe catch Pokemon uh, Darkrai and Arceus, that is unfortunately going to have to be uh, saved for for uh, a bonus episode. But now we have one last thing we need to take care of, and that's to go to the Battle Park. That's our first time there, so please step this way. Since this is your first visit, you need to be given a point card. Point cards are used only in the Battle Park. need information on the point card, please ask the receptionist next to me. 
I'm the one to ask if you need any information on the facilities here in the Battle Park. For more information on battle rules here at the Battle Park, please ask the receptionist across from me. So yes, we are now here in the Battle Park. The Battle Park is a place where trainers may enjoy battles. There are two facilities in the Battle Park, the Exchange Service Counter and the Battle Tower. The Exchange Service Counter is the building that looks like a castle. We may exchange battle points we've earned for prizes, such as every possible TM in the game. And then, there's the Battle Tower, the building at the back of the Battle Park. Single battle rooms are for conducting one-on-one -on -one battles. Double battle rooms are for two-on-one. -on -one. There are also Master Class Single and Master Class Doubles, which feature high-level opponents and raise up each time you go on seven, seven win strings up your rink. Uh, I'm sorry, I probably just friggin' butchered the hell out of that. But anyway... <laughs> there is... Battle Tower here. Or I should say there's... Yeah. Oof! Hello there. What the? Whoops, sorry about that. I was in a rush. Oh, wait a second, aren't you? You're Mr. Ben from Twinleaf! Wow, that brings back memories. So if you're here, he can't be far behind. Huh. This should be fine. See ya! And, like father, like son, what the? Hey, Mr. Ben, you came to the Battle Tower too, huh? I decided I'll see it. I decided I'll see how I measure up in my quest to be the greatest. But that guy you were just talking to. Nah, it's all right. I got here on my own power. It won't take long before I see him. See you, Mr. Ben. I'm gonna toughen up here. Yeah, the guy who just slammed into us, that was Barry's father, Palmer. And so, yeah, we got the exchange service corner here. So let's see what type of prizes we can get. On the left side, we've got fabulous items, such as the ability patch. This will allow us to uh, change our Pokemon's regular ability with their hidden ability. The, abil the capsule that allows us to swap Pokemon between two regular abilities and the bottle cap, which will allow us to hyper train a Pokemon. Or I believe at least it will. Um, yeah, I believe that will allow us to uh, to train up a Pokemon to have like maximum IVs. I think there's like two types of bottle caps. There's the, the silver bottle cap and then there's like the gold bottle cap. But yeah, we also got more lucky eggs. We got the uh, uh, EV enhancing items such as the power bracer, power belt lands and so on and so forth and then this side is the technical machine side we can get virtually every TM in the game here so we got uh, earthquake shadow ball brick break sludge bomb aerial ace attract energy ball dragon pulse and many many others now, I don't know if the TMs swap out on a daily basis because I noticed that not every TM was readily available but I don't know if that's the case or if you have to rank up enough they profile you on TV if you set a good record here this is my only chance to regain my glory as an idol. Welcome to Battle Tower. I'm your guide to single and double battle rooms. Would you like to take the battle room challenge? Tell me more about this place. The Battle Tower single battle rooms are facilities for conducting single battles with three Pokemon. Similarly, double battle rooms are facilities for conducting double battles with four Pokemon. There are many battle rooms in the Battle Tower for team battles. In each of these rooms, seven trainers will await your challenge. If you manage to defeat all seven, you will earn battle points, or BP for short. Until you challenge the fifth trainer, you can take a break during the challenge to step out of the battle room and reselect your Pokemon. If you stop your challenge after defeating five trainers, you will have to start your challenge from the beginning. But if you don't save, you will be disqualified. Now, the battle tower is exactly what it sounds like. You can have Pokemon battles. 
If you win, you can earn rare candies and their battle points. And then this, I believe, is the Master Class. Yes. In order to enter Master Class, you will have to win 49 times in a row in either the single or double battles of regular battle. So yeah, we can't do anything with the Master Class battles right at the moment. Ah, and we also get the judge function here. After selecting a Pokemon, press the plus or minus button to see its potential. With this, you will truly be an expert. So now with this, we can actually check the IVs of our Pokemon. Oh, that is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to check. So let's check our IVs for good stats for Melody. Okay, stats for Lumi. Ray, good for Dewey, good for Pyram, and Daruk. And I'm just kind of curious. Ooh, Mew's got, well, Mew all obviously has got amazing stats. Uh, great stats for the Bastion. For, and Dr. Fuzzy Bum's also got some great stats as well. That's really good. Kranidos, the Soul Rock. You know, obviously... Jirachi's got some amazing stats as well. Kecleon's not, not bad. The Anorith's really good. Man, three bet three really good ones. That's really an, an amazing. But I'm curious on just uh who else has got amazing stats or even great. Yeah, the Ammonite's really good. Cinder's got some good stuff here as well. Of course, she's a good kitty. But unfortunately, this Cinder's a male, so... That's not really going to help me out a whole hell of a lot. Um, I'm curious, what was... Yeah, okay stats for Pearl. <laughs> Damn. Really good for Vibrava here. I'm going to have to really def... Uh, and of course, obviously, Shaman's got some really good ones as well. Uh, I'm going to have to really think my team out here in regards to what I want to do. But th that's not too much of a problem because, honestly, I'm not really going to focus too terribly much on Battle Tower that much. We're definitely going to go ahead and do a quick playthrough of the Battle Tower here. Welcome to Battle Tower. I am your guide to single and double battle rooms. Would you like to take the battle room challenge? I want to battle. Uh, let's do single battles. And I think, yeah, we'll do this team. Now, Battle Tower will obviously uh, change things around a bit so that instead of being at our regular party levels, everyone's uh, reduced down to level 50. So I think what we'll go ahead and we'll do is I want to do... We'll start out with Dewey. We'll throw Ray in second. And then we'll enter Daruk last. Would you like to save your adventure so far? Yeah, I think I'll do that. I will now show you to the battle room. Starts out with the Machop. Good thing that we have a fairy type move on our Roserade here. Super effective Dazzling Gleam. 
Hell yeah, we should one-shot this thing, no problem. Grass and, uh, water lombre? That sounds like a job for a poison-type sludge bomb. Assuming we don't get faked out. And then Grass and Poison Bulbasaur. Which, not really that effective for any of my Pokemon's moves, but we still managed to critical hit one shot of Bulbasaur. Ow! And that's our first battle. Willpower doesn't cut it on its own. Our Pokemon will be restored to full health. And we'll be facing opponent number two. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a quick pause here. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I actually had dinner on the way, and when I had to take that break, I was like, oh, <laughs> they're just down the street, almost at the door. And so now, <clears throat> battle two, and we're already getting into why I call this the bullshit tower. Starting out with my... Grass type Dewey, my opponent already starts out with not just a fire type, but a psychic type as well. Almost, it seems, to specifically counter my particular grass and poison. Now, I can't really give too much of a complaint here because, again, it's only battle two. But the further we get higher into the back of the power, to, the further uh, we progress and the higher up we go, the more the game is going to stack the deck against us. As you can tell, it already used the light screen against us. So it seems to already be sizing up what our team is capable of doing. Or at least what my Roserade is capable of doing. <laughs> We're going to keep going on, keeping the course. <clears throat> For opponent number three. Ground type Santru. And once again, Psychic type Chime Echo. Water type Finneon.
opponent number four. Keep on staying the course. Got ourselves a picnicker. I'll battle you like I'm on a picnic. What you starting out with there? Like to type Pikachu? Alrighty, fair enough. And her opening gambit is an iron tail, which <laughs> lowers our defense and uh, knocks us down below half health. Also, unlike most battles, these battles are automatically set to the set style. You cannot um, switch over to, um, or swap over to switch method. Once you knock out an opponent, they automatically send out their next Pokemon. None of this, uh, hey, your opponent's about to utilize this particular Pokemon. Do you want to switch up? Ah, no, they've thought of that. Rindo Berry, which didn't stop it from being one shot. Ooh, and a Cyndaquil. We had two starters. A Fire-type Cyndaquil, a Water-type Mud Gift. What's the third one going to be? Is that going to be a... St oh, it's not a starter. That's unfortunate. I was kind of hoping we'd get like a, a Water-type... Hit it with the sludge bomb. Although it kind of makes sense that you would have a flying type. And here I am giving the battle tower all this much shit, and I'm just kind of wrecking through the first echelons. Then again, like I mentioned before, this is the uh, the first tier of opponents. Going through the uh, the battle tower on the first seven probably isn't going to be super difficult. Now I can only hope. Very effective against Steel Psychic Bronzor. Who hits us with the Gyro Ball? Uh, actually, let's go ahead and swap out. The first instance in us having to do that. Your third Pokemon gonna be executed? Yeah, we can crunch it. 
Grunge or Poison Jab, one of the two. Yeah, I'm hoping we get more than just a small pittance of BP. And now here we are, final opponent. Opponent number seven. I look wimpy. Look who's talking there, squirt. School kid, Cecilia. Got ourselves a Dratini. <clears throat> Goes down to a Dazzling Gleam. And then finally, an Oddish. Grass and Poison as well. Beating all seven trainers for seven win streak. We <sighs> and this is why I call the bullshit tower the bullshit tower because even for seven seven wins in a row, we only get three battle points. Again, for reference, this is how many battle points we need for the ability patch, the ability capsule, and for uh, power point ups. At least with the um, the items, these only are only one apiece, and the EV training items are ten apiece, so that's not terrible. But, again, take a look at how much they're charging for the TMs. The minimum that I've seen thus far is 32 battle points. And if that's three trainers, if we get only three per seven trainers, we're going to have to go through like a streak of like 70 trainers just to even be able to afford one of these virtually and even not e and even then not even then and that's assuming we go in through just win after win after win without failing once so yeah that's the battle tower i'm not thrilled with it i don't like the battle tower i really wish that they just would stop Bringing it back! Ugh. Wanted to make sure I didn't wake up my cat accidentally by doing that. But we have had the Battle Frontier. The last time we've had it was like back in Generation 4. It's been four generations since. Bring back the Battle Frontier. That was actually fun. That was actually worth spending time and effort on. Not this bullshit tower <sighs> but anyway that is pretty much everything that we can do as of this time here in Pokemon Shining Pearl I'm not going to be dealing with the battle tower I'm just not it's not worth my time it's not worth my effort 
there is one final thing we need to do. And that is to eventually not deal with the ball capsules, but to go back and climb back up to Mount Coronet. And use the Azure Flute and call forth Arceus himself. That, however, will not be for some time. So for now, we're going to go ahead and call things here. This has been Pokemon Let's Play Shining Pearl. Thank you so, so very much for staying with me this whole journey. And I mentioned before that this was going to take us about, like, what, 50 parts to take care of? This here is, I believe, part 52. So I wasn't too terribly far off the mark. Maybe part 53 if you count the bonus episode for when we take on Dark Ryan Arceus. But for now, I'm putting this series to bed. Join me next time as we go dive into yet another Let's Play. See you all next time.